Hello and welcome to the 2022 Key Stage 2 Maths Paper 3 Reasoning Walkthrough. In this video, I'm going to run through the entire paper and show you how to get 100% on it. But before I do that, make sure that firstly, you are subscribed to the channel because I bring out amazing, helpful videos just like this all the time. It's entirely free. And also give this video a thumbs up. By doing that, it really helps me out. It helps lots of other people out as well because more people see it, the more thumbs up that you give. So if you want to help your classmates out and other people that you know who are going to be doing the test, make sure you give this video a thumbs up as well. And secondly, if you want to get the most out of this video, I'm going to leave a PDF to this document in the video description so that you can do the test first before you watch the video. Give yourself 45 minutes to do this test, try your absolute best and then come back to watch this video and see where you could have improved or see where you got the marks so that you can improve for next time. So number one, here is a drawing of a hexagonal prism. How many faces does the prism have? All of these sides effectively are faces when we're talking about 3D. So this is a hexagon, which means it's got six sides. So each one of these is a face. There are six faces, one, two, three, one underneath, four, five, six, and then we've got one at each end. So it's six plus two, which is eight. So it has eight faces. Here's a really useful tip if you get a question like this. Think about the shape of the prism. So if it was a triangular prism, for example, triangular means triangle, so there are three sides, plus the two. That's the formula to work it out because you need to add these ones at the end because it's 3D. So thinking about another example, if you wanted to do a pentagonal prism, which is a pentagon, you've got five plus the two at the side would be seven. In this case, let's see if the formula works. Hexagonal, six on a hexagon plus two is eight. So there's your answer. Number two, here are six number cards. Use all six cards to complete the three multiplications below. This is really just a test of your times table, but make sure that you have used all the cards. You don't repeat any. So in this example, 24 is the same as. You should know this if you know your times table. Three times eight. So we can get rid of those. What have we got left? Four, five, six, seven. Well, I know that seven times four is 28. Now we can get rid of those. And do these ones match? Yes, they do. Five times six is what we've got left, and that equals 30. So there's your answer. Number three, Olivia buys a banana, an apple, and a bag of nuts. This is a two-mark question, so there's usually a couple of steps involved. That's my top tip. Always look at the marks. So it says she pays with three 50p coins. Great. But what is her change? So the first thing we need to work out is how much does all of this cost? So she buys one banana, which is 30p plus an apple, which is 45p, plus some nuts, which is 60p. So how much does she pay in total for all of these things? 60 plus 30 is 90, plus 45 is 135. That's 135p. She pays with three 50p coins. So three lots of 50 is 150. That's what she's given. That's how much she actually owes. So the difference is how we work out the change. 150 subtract 135 is 15p. That's her change. Number four, draw four lines to match each fraction to its equivalent decimal. Now remember, equivalent means it equals it. It might not look exactly the same, but it's the same value. So let's tick off the ones that you should know very easily. Half, you should know, is the same as 0 0.5. You should also know that three quarters is the same as 0 0.75. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. We have to do a little bit of thinking. We have 3 tenths. If you know your place value, which you should do, you know that we've got tens, ones, then we have a decimal point, we have tenths, then we have hundredths. So if we're going to put 3 tenths into this place value column here, it would be 0 0.3. We've got no ones and we've got 3 tenths. So we have 0 0.3, which is 3 tenths, and no ones. So 3 tenths is the same as 0 0.3. Now, we also have 3 hundredths. So we can do the same for this column here. We've got 3 hundredths. There's 3 there. We don't have anything else. So it's no tenths, decimal point, no ones. So it's 0 0.03 for that one. 
Number five, some children vote for their favorite ice cream flavor. So we have a missing number here, which means we're going to have to do a little bit of calculation before we can work out the answer. The question is actually only asking us how many children voted for strawberry, but that's a number that's missing. So how do we work that out? Well, we know that there were 402 children that voted in total. Let's write that down. I'm sure that's going to be important. 402. So there are 402 children in total. Now, they can only vote for one ice cream flavor each, which means that if we work out how many children voted for mint and chocolate and vanilla, whatever's left will be how many children voted for strawberry. Let me show you what I mean. So let's firstly work out how many children's votes we've got that have been counted, because remember, we've got some missing here. So we have the chocolate. So 154 people out of 402 liked the chocolate, plus vanilla, 87, plus the mint, which was 38, which equals 279 children in total. I've just done that in my head, but if you need to do some calculation, you can. So what do we do now? Well, we need to work out how many children's votes we haven't counted. Well, we've got 402 children in total. And the ones that we've got are 279. So let's work out the difference by doing a subtraction. I know that 21 is how many I need to get to 300. So it will be 121 plus 2. The answer is 123. Don't worry if you don't understand how I've just done that in my head. You can, of course, use written method, but I'm trying to go quickly as possible. So if you wanted to do this written method, all you need to do is work out this sum using whichever method you like, and you will find that the answer is 123. 123 children liked strawberry as their favourite ice cream. Number six, this chart shows the range of temperatures each day during one week from Monday to Friday. What was the lowest temperature? This is only one mark, so it should be quite straightforward. You can see along the x-axis here, we have the temperature in degrees. Now, these are the days, so I can see that the lowest temperatures were on Tuesday and Friday, and it was this number here. It's the same for Tuesday and Friday. So what number is that? Well, this is minus 6, and this is minus 8. So it's in between these two, minus 6. This must be minus 7. That was the coldest temperature, the lowest temperature we had that week, which is very chilly. Now there's a follow-up question to this one. It says, what was the difference between the highest and the lowest temperatures on Wednesday? Now, because it says, what's the difference? That means it's a subtraction. So let's have a look at what we've got. This is the highest temperature on Wednesday, and this is the lowest temperature on Wednesday. So the highest temperature, as warm as it got, was three degrees, which is still very cold. And we had the lowest temperature was minus five. Now, it says, what's the difference? What do I do to work out the answer? Do I do 3 minus 5? That's not going to give us the right answer. It's asking for the difference, the range. So we need to either count up on the number line or do some calculation. If we use the number line, we can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's a difference of 8 there. That is the answer. If you wanted to work it out doing some calculation rather than using a number line, you would do... What is 3 minus this number here, which is, in brackets, minus 5? So what we should know is if we do a subtraction of a minus, so if we take away a minus, we always end up with a positive. So this is the same as 3, this becomes a positive, plus 5, which equals 8. So you can use a number line if you want to do it that way. Either way, it gets you the answer of 8. Number 7, one Saturday afternoon, a total of 234,869 people attended three rugby matches. 80,978 people attended match 1. 72,319 people attended match 2. So how many people attended match 3? This is relatively straightforward. These are the total number of people that attended in total for all three matches we know how many attended the first and the second so it's just a case of adding these up and finding the difference between this number and this number so this is the first sum here we're going to add these two numbers together to work out how many people we've got so far and then we can find the difference 8 plus 9 i know is 17 here's the 7 carry the 1 7 plus 1 plus 1 is 9 9 plus 3 is 12 put the 2 
carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 8 plus 7 is 15. So our answer is 153,297. But that's not the answer to the question. It says how many people attended match 3. That's how many people that have attended so far. And this is how many people that will attend in total. So we need to do this, subtract this. So let's put the number down here. We can work that out. Remember, we start with the units. What's 9 subtract 7? It's 2. What's 6 subtract 9? We can't do that, so let's borrow one from here. 16 subtract 9 is 7. 7 subtract 2 is 5. 4 subtract 3 is 1. 3 subtract 5, again, we can't do without getting a negative number, so let's borrow one from the neighbour. He can go there. So now we have 13 subtract 5, which is 8. 1 subtract 1 is nothing, we can leave that blank or put a 0. Our answer therefore is 81,572. Now if you want to check to make sure that that is right, what I would do is do the inverse. So 81,572 plus this number here should equal this number here. I always make sure if you've got time in the test, I do that to come back to make sure I've got my answer right. But I can tell you that this one is the answer. Number eight, round this number to the nearest 1,000. Now remember, when we're rounding, we look at the next column along. So if it's looking for the 1,000, we look at the hundreds number. And if it's five or above, we give it a shove onto the next 1,000. If it's four or below, we let it go. We let it drop down. So in this case, it's a five, so we can push this number, give it a shove, up to 8,000. That's the answer there. To the nearest 100, we look at the next column along, which is tens. Now it's four or below, so we'll let it go to 7,500. And to the nearest 10, let's look at the ones column. Now it's six, five or above. We give it a shove, 7,550. Now you need at least two of these to get one mark, and all three to get two. Number nine, complete the calculation. 1,000 multiplied by 416 is the same as equals 10 times what? All we need to do here is do a little bit of switching. So in order to make this calculation work, this number is 100 times smaller than this one. So we'll need to make this number 100 times bigger so that it balances. So if you want to multiply that by 100, it's 41600. If you want to double check that, let's work it out. What is 1,000 multiplied by 416? It's 416,000. So therefore, in order to make 416,000, we need to do 416 hundreds, or 41,600, multiplied by 10. That would give us 416,000, which is the same as that. If you found that question hard, I'd recommend spending a bit of time looking at your tens, hundreds, and a thousands place value. There's always at least one question like this in the SATs. So if you are good at doing tens, hundreds, and a thousands, and you know it like the back of your hand, that will really help. Adam buys four pens and a ruler and pays £4.75 altogether. Jack buys two pens and pays £1.98 altogether. How much does a ruler cost? Right, so this is actually a type of simultaneous equation. Don't worry if you're not quite sure what that means. All it really means is we know how much two pens are, so we should be able to work out how much four pens are, and then once we know that, we can work out how much a ruler is. So... What do we do first? Well, Jack bought two pens and paid £1.98. So that should mean that two lots of pens equals £1.98, which it does. So how do we work out four pens? All we need to do is multiply this number by two. So four pens, therefore, is twice as much. That's actually going to be, if you think about it, that's nearly two pounds. So it's nearly four pounds if we double it. It is £3.96p. Now we know how much it costs for four pens, we can work out how much the ruler costs. Because four pens cost £3.96, so four pens plus a ruler equals £4.75. So what's the difference between £4.75 and £3.96? Well, it's 75p plus the 4p 
shy we are from four pounds. So it's 75p plus four P, which is 79p. So that's how much a ruler costs, 79p. Now, just like I said in the last question, if you want to work out this answer and double check that you got it right, do the inverse. So one ruler is 79p plus four pens, which is £3.96, should equal £4.75, and it does. So that is the right answer. Number 11, Ali chooses a whole number. When she multiplies her number by 4, the answer is less than 100. When she multiplies her number by 5, the answer is greater than 100. So write a number that Ali could have started with. Because it says could have started with, it actually means there's a lot of options that you can choose from. There isn't just one answer. So you need to think of a number that you multiply by 4 will give you a number less than 100. But if you multiply it by 5, the number will be greater than 100. So let's have a think about that. Well, if we divide 100 by 4, we know that the answer is 25. So I have a hunch that all of the answers will need to be less than 25 and also more than another number, which we'll come to. The reason it can't be 25 or more is because if you multiply 25 by 4, you get an answer that's 100 or more, which isn't what it's asking. It's not less than 100. So let's pick 24, for example. 24 multiplied by 4 is 96. So, so far, that is less than 100. So that's good. If, however, we multiply 24 by 5, is it bigger than 100? I can tell you it definitely will be. 24 multiplied by 5 is 120. There you go. It's greater than 100. So that number could work. However, there are other options as well. Let's go a little bit lower. What about the number 21? Let's see if that works. 21 multiplied by 4. Is it less than 100? It is 84. So yes. Now if we multiply it by 5, 21 multiplied by 5, is it more than 100? 20 times 5 is 100, plus 5 is 105. So there's an answer for you as well. You could use a number 21, you could use a number 22, you could even use 23. You can also use 24, but if you go any higher than that, it doesn't fit the first section of the question, so it doesn't work. And if you go less then 20, it's also not going to work. And the reason being, let me show you, if we did 19, 19 multiplied by 4 is definitely less than 100, it's 76. But if we multiply 19 by 5, do we get an answer that's greater than 100? 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 9 is 45, that's 95. So that doesn't work. So it has to be either 20, 21, 22, 23 or 24. You can't have a number that's bigger than that. I'm going to go with my first answer, which was 24. Number 12, William says the rule for this diagram. Find the difference between the numbers in the circle. Double this to make the number in the square. So let's do exactly what William said. He said find the difference between the numbers in the circle. So the difference between 20 and 5 is 15. So 15 is our answer to that first bit. Double this to make the number. Double 15 is 30. So that rule works. Now it says, can we use the same rule to write the missing number below? So we need to find the difference. What's 100 subtract 32? That's how we find the difference. You should know your number bonds up to 100. So that's 68. Now we know that we need to double it. Double 68, I happen to know, is 136, but if you're not sure, do 68 times 2 and do some written calculation there. Looking at the next one then, we've actually had the answer given to us, but we need to work out one of the circles. So how do we do this? We go backwards. Instead of starting at the beginning, subtracting these and then doubling it, we're going to do the opposite. So at the end, we were timesing by 2, weren't we? That's what was doubling. So the opposite of that is dividing by 2. So let's divide 400 by 2. 400 divided by 2 is 200. Now 200 needs to be the answer to what is the difference between these two numbers. So when we're finding the difference it's normally a subtraction. So what's the opposite of subtraction? It's addition. So 110 plus 200 will be 3 110. If you want to check it, always do the inverse. I've said this three times already in this video, but make sure you do. Let's check it. 310 subtract 110 is 200. That was the first step. Multiply it by 2 to get the answer. 200 times 2 is 400. So 310 is the right answer.
Number 13, write the missing fraction to make this addition correct. They always throw in questions like this. If you ever see an addition or a subtraction of fractions and they've got different denominators, that is a big red flag. You need to change the denominators so that they are the same, so that you can compare them. Otherwise, it's like comparing apples and oranges. It's very difficult to do. So what do we do then? Let's convert either these sixths into thirds or these thirds into sixths, because that way we've got the same. How do we do that? Well, if I wanted to convert this into thirds, I would divide the top and the bottom by two. Make sure you do both. But because this is an odd number, if I divide it by two, I'm going to end up with a decimal at the top, and that will get very messy. So instead, let's multiply this by two. If we do the top and the bottom, we'll have an equivalent fraction. So what's two times two? It's four. And what's three times two? It's six. So two thirds is exactly the same as four sixths. It's equivalent. Now we have the same denominator. So it's very straightforward. Four sixths plus something equals five sixths. Well, if we want to get five sixths, we're going to need another sixth, aren't we? Four sixths plus one sixth is five sixths. Number 14, Jack hires a hall for a party. He must have a lot of friends. This formula is used to work out the total cost. The total cost is £15 booking fee plus £12.50 per hour. What is the total cost of hiring the hall from 6 till 11 p.m.? So how many hours is that, firstly? 6 to 7 p.m. is 1 hour, to 8 is 2, to 9 is 3, to 10 is 4, to 11 is 5 the hall is going to be used for five hours, and that's important because every hour we're there, it costs us money. So let's work it out. It's going to be £15 to start with, plus five lots of £12.50. Let's do a quick calculation. What is five times 12? It's 60. What is five times 50p? It's £2.50. Add those together. £62.50 just for the hours, plus our booking fee? The answer is £77.50. Right, moving on to number 15. We're getting there. Stefan stands in the centre of this square. That's there. He is facing towards F, so he's looking this way, Stefan. He turns anti-clockwise to face D. What angle does Stefan turn through? So, think about a clock. A clockwise is this way, going around in this right direction, and anti-clockwise is going in the left direction. So he turns anti-clockwise to face D, so he was there. He's now gone one, two, now he's facing D. Now this is the angle that he's done here. I haven't got a ruler, so you have to excuse me. This is the angle. Now it says, what angle does he turn through? Well, we can see quite clearly that this is a right angle, so you should know that there are 90 degrees in a right angle. That's what he's done. He's gone from that corner to that corner. So the answer is 90. If you want to be really clever and work that out without doing any visualization whatsoever, let me just give you a very quick tip. If you're not interested in this, skip forward 10 seconds. If you're facing F and you turn to face D, you've done a whole quarter there of a square. And you should know that there are 360 degrees in a square. So if you've done a quarter of that, what's a quarter of 360? It's 90. Stefan is now facing towards D. He turns three right angles clockwise. Write the letter he faces. So let's scroll up and have a look. He's facing D. He turns three right angles clockwise. So that's one, because we're going the other direction now. Two, three. So he is now facing letter B. Number 16, part of this 10 by 10 grid is shaded. Take the fractions that represent the shaded part of the grid. So how are we going to work this out? Well, 10 times 10 is 100. So there are 100 squares in this big square. How are we going to work out the fractions then? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 full lines that are shaded. So 4 lots of 10 is 40. So 40 out of 100 is effectively the fraction, but we can turn that into another fraction. Look at what we've got here. One quarter, well, one quarter, you should know, if in hundredths is 25 hundredths, so that's not right. Two fifths, though, we can turn that into four tenths by multiplying the top and bottom by two. Four tenths, 
is the same as 40 hundredths, so that's correct. And look, we've got another 4 tenths there, that is also the same as 40 hundredths, so that one is correct too. Are there any more? Aha! I've already given you one of the answers, 40 hundredths. If you didn't think to do it this way and actually count the squares, if you knew that you got four full lines out of 10, you had four tenths of the square. And you can do exactly what we've just done, but starting at four tenths. You can turn four tenths into two fifths. You can turn it, turn it into 40 hundredths. It doesn't really matter. As long as you start with the correct number at the beginning, you can do some equivalent fraction work to work out exactly what you've got. Now you need all three of these to get the two marks there. If you get two out of three, you'll get one mark. Number 17, Kim makes a cuboid model using straws. We've got the height here, we've got the length and the width. She uses straws that are 7.5 centimeters long for the height, 11 centimeters long for the length, and 8.5 for the width. What's the total length of all the straws? Right, before we do anything, I like to visualize things. We have the height here, and it tells us for the height, each one of these is 7.5. How many heights do we have? We've got one here, one here, 7.5, and another one here, 7.5, and another up and down height here, 7.5. So we have four heights. So what I'm going to do is 4 times 7.5. And I'm just going to put in brackets for myself H, because I know that's the height. Now, look at the ones for the length. She knows that these are 11. So we've got 11 here and 11 here, 11 here at the top, and 11 here as well. So it's four lots of 11. Again, four lots of 11 is the length. I'll put the L in there. And for the width, I imagine it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, there's four of those. One, two, three, four. Four lots of 8.5. Four times 8.5 is the width. Put a W. What's the total length? Right, we need to work out all of this. So let's do some calculation. Four times 7.5 is 30, because two 7.5s is 15. Double it, it's 30. Four lots of 11 is 44. Four lots of 8.5 is 34, because two 8.5s is 17. Double it, it's 34. So let's work out the total sum. So 30 plus 44 plus 34, 34 plus 44 is 77, plus 30 equals 107. 107 centimeters is the correct answer for that. Final few questions now. There's a sale on. Number 18, it's reduced by 30%. The full price is £15 and it's now 30% off. So what is the reduced price? The best way to do this, or the easiest way anyway, is to find 10%. So what's 10% of £15? 15 divided by 10 is 1.5. So £1.50 is 10%. Let's find 30% then. How do we do that? Well, we've got 10% here. Just multiply it by 3. That'll give us 30%. So £1.50 multiplied by 3 is £4.50. Is that our answer, though? No, that's how much money we've saved. That's not the final price, because that's a lot more than 30%. So how do we do it then? This is the full price subtract the discount, which is £4.50, and that will give us our new answer. So, £15, subtract £4.50, equals £11.50. Number 19 says, Jack says when you square a prime number, the answer only has two factors. Explain why Jack is not correct. So what's squaring a number, or a prime number in this case? If you square something, you multiply it by itself. So if you want to keep it simple, what I would do is pick a prime number, any prime number that you know, and square it. So pick a nice small one, it's nice and easy. And then as long as your answer shows that there's no, there's more than two factors, then your answer will be fine. So let's just pick another one for simplicity. We know that 3 is a prime number. 3 squared is 9. So therefore, how many factors are there in 9? There's 1 and 9, and there's 3 and 3, and that's actually it. So there's 3 there. So if you literally just did that and said 3 factors, that proves that he's wrong. Even if it's just one number, it proves that it's wrong. So that will give you the answer.
Right, we're in the final two questions now. So these tend to be pretty tough and pretty chunky. So let's have a look at this one. This table shows how many people finished the New York Marathon in each of the first four decades it was held. First decade, this number, second, and so on. It says, what is the mean number of people who finished the marathon per decade? Round your answer to the nearest 100. So there's actually two things you've got to do for this final answer and more. What's the mean number? So that's an average. But also it says round your answer. So we need to do some rounding as well. How do we find the mean? We add up all of the results and divide them by how many options we've got. So in this case, we have these four numbers. We're going to add them all together and divide them by how many options, which is four. So let's add up these numbers and divide it by four. You can add all these up in one go and you know that might be something that I would do but if you want to get the marks you don't want to be making silly mistakes with your adding so let's just do two at a time and then we can add them all up at the end. So what's four plus zero? Let's just put a line so we don't get confused. Four plus zero is four. Two plus two is also four. Eight plus four is twelve. Put the two carry the one. One plus two is three. Five plus eight is thirteen. Carry the one. 4 plus 2 is 6. So that's these ones done. Let's put a little line there so I know. Let's add these two together then, and then we can add all of them together at the end. So 170,932 plus 24,000, watch your place value, 863. Add them together. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 plus 8 is 17. 7 carry the 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, 7 plus 2 is 9, 1 plus nothing is 1. That is the answer to these two. So now we need to add all of this together. So let's do the final monster sum. Right, now we're going to add these two together. So starting with the 1s, 4 plus 5 is 9, 4 plus 9 is 13, 3 plus 1, carry the 1, sorry, 2 plus 1 plus 7 is 10. There's the zero, carry the one. One plus three is four, plus the five is nine. Three plus nine is 12. Let's put the two, carry the one. One plus one is two, plus six is eight. So our total number for the total number of people who finished the marathons for all four decades was 829,039. So now we need to find the mean, which is to divide by how many options there are. And there are four options. So... 829,039 divided by 4. Let's do it short division. And the reason I'm doing short division is we're dividing by a single digit. How many 4s go into 8? It's 2. How many 4s go into 2? Uh, the answer is 0. But how many 4s go into 29? If you know your times table, you'll know that 7 4s are 28. So that's 7 with one remainder. How many fours go into 10? It's two, remainder two. How many fours go into 23? It's five, remainder three. How many fours go into 39? Nearly 10, but it's not quite. It's nine, remainder three. So that would be our answer if we could leave it like that. It's 207,259 remainder three, but it says round your answer to the nearest hundred, thankfully, because it's not a very nice number at all. It's not a nice question. So how do we round this to the nearest hundred? Remember, we look at our hundreds column. That's here. We look at the next number along. If it's five or above, we give it a shove. So our answer is 207300. Zero. We don't have to think about the remainder. That's gone. Now we've done the rounding. So our answer, final answer, is 207,300 people. That was a really hard question. So well done if you got that right. But do not panic if you got that wrong. There's so many places you could have gone wrong. Could have just been a simple ad. Could have been that your division wasn't quite right. Whatever it was, go back and find where you went wrong because that will help you next time. You need to have all of this working out or something similar to get the three marks. You will get some marks if you got the answer wrong, but you did most of the working out correctly. So just work out where you went wrong and see how many marks you got from that. And we're at the final question. Hooray! So, 21. These two rectangles are identical. 
The length of each rectangle is three times its width. So what's the coordinates points of P? So we know that the length is three times the width. And thankfully, they've actually given us the width. They haven't made it easy. But because we know that this is the zero point on the x-axis, and they've given us the coordinate of minus two on the x-axis, because remember, x goes first and then y. This is minus two, so it's gone back one, two spaces. So that must mean the width is two. So if we want to find the length, it's three times the width. So what's the width? It's two. Three times two means that this must be six. So that's good. How are we going to work out the point of P then? Well, we know because the rectangles are identical that the length of this one must also be six. We also know that the width must be two. So this is two. Before we find out the answer then, let's look at the clues we've been given. We have a point which is at zero on the x and one on the y axis. So this is one. So that must mean that this is also one. So if we count up two from one, one plus two is three. The y point of this coordinate is going to be a three. How are we going to work out the x? Well, this is zero, and we've just worked out that this length is six. So zero all the way along to six must be that point there. So it is six, three. That is the coordinates for point P. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'm also really hopeful that you scored highly on this test, but do not panic if you didn't. These videos are really helpful to help you improve, because the only way you get better is by knowing where you go wrong and improving on it for next time. So if you've made some mistakes, work out what sort of mistakes you've made so that next time you can work on them. And I've got loads and loads of videos on this channel that are all free for you to watch to help you do that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.